Hello everyone and welcome to the second video of the Chrome Developer Tools tutorials. So in the last video I went over how to use this Elements tab and what some of these different things are. In this video we're going to look at the Console tab. Okay, So right here you can see that there's not really much going on, which is fine. So if I wanted to compute this, let's just make sure that this function actually works. I'll say it's 245 millimeters and the aspect, aspect, aspect ratio is 45 and a width of 18 inches, it hit the volume, and it pops that up for me. Okay, so the function worked, nothing came up in the console, which is good, and the page is doing what we wanted it to do. Now, what the console is used for is to kind of show you errors, and it can also do some other stuff, but let's start with uh, finding errors. So let's say I had a typo in parse float. Okay, if I hit save and refresh it, there's no errors here, and that's because this is inside of a function called volume inside tire. So the computer, the, the browser, hasn't actually rendered this code yet. It will render it run, once the user executes this function. Okay, so if I run the same thing now, you can see uncut reference error parse float is not defined. And then I can click on one of these links and it'll take me over to the sources tab and show me that line of code in the sources tab. Okay. So this is really helpful because I'll be like, oh, you know what? There's actually not a parse float. It's parse float, okay? Same thing, if you have like little typos, let's say I uppercase that on accident and ran this, you can see same thing, parse float isn't defined. So that one might be a little bit trickier to see, but in cases like that, you can go back and look at examples from the book and be like, oh, that, that's what's wrong with it, okay? So it will find errors in here for you and that's really nice. Uh, same thing, if I, you know, we have this idea of width right here, let's say um, I had a typo there and I named it with a capital W, knowing that JavaScript is a case sensitive language. Um, and I did that, it's a cannot read property value of null. A lot of errors like this are gonna come up because it's, it, you know, it's a learning process, you know. But when you see a cannot read property value of null, that means that it couldn't find the value of null, which means this came out as null, all right? So when you look at that, you can be like, oh, so there's something wrong with this right here, and then you could check to be like, all right, do I have a width ID? And then you could look here, and I can hit Control D and highlight the next, all the instances here, and I can see that this is a capital width, but this is not. Okay, um, and so then I could fix that error. Okay, so good for finding errors. All right, the next thing it's good for, let's say I have a chunk of code, okay? Let's say in here I have a function called do math. Okay, and we'll have number one, well, we'll leave that blank. Okay, so in do math I could say two times three plus nine minus Okay. All right, now, if I wanted to test this before actually running it in my program, I could go into the console and say x equals, and just kind of type it out, you know, and then it would pop out 12. Okay, it did that math for me. I can see it did six plus nine, which is 15, then minus three, which is 12, okay? And, and you can do that with anything. If I had like a for loop in here, or something like that, or if I wanted to, test something, I could be like, alert, this is awesome. Okay, the page actually executes that alert and says, this is awesome. Or I could also say, alert X. Okay, we have an X in our little session right here, so it'll alert 12. Okay, and um, you know, if I wanted to practice with the for loop, I could say for I equals zero, I is less than, let's say five, I plus plus, and in that for loop, I could say um, alert I. And then make sure to close that for loop, and then execute it. It'll start off at zero, because I is zero. It'll go up to one, two, three, and four, and then it'll be done, because I was no longer less than five. Okay, so you can use the console to test out a lot of code. You can write, you can write JavaScript here to see if it works the way that you want it to work. Uh, especially different math problems can be really helpful here. Um, 
these were helpful for your desk checks when you want to check code there and see what a desk check will do. Okay, <clears throat> um, but that's just a little bit on how to use the console.